What on earth am I going to do with that? The most significant challenge that we've got with this tree is that all of the branches are on one side of the trunk and growing in one direction. Down at the base here we've got this really large scar on one side of the surface roots. It is healing though. The original graft union's here. It's not a terrible graft but there is still inverse taper and some ugly bulging. Although it's got potential for a windswept design it's, it's almost like too contrived. The base that we've got here is really unusual. It's really, really wide and it tapers really strongly. You know, that's kind of unique actually. If we didn't make use of this feature in a tree, it would be a shame. Another option would be to graft in a new trunk leader below a loud blackbird and create a very short squat sumo style tapering tree. Alright, I've cleaned a lot of the twigs that may be in the way of doing a thread graft and now I'm going to put some wire on to help with the bend. Japanese maple can be brittle, especially this time of the year, so just putting some wire on is just going to support that branch as I curve it back round in on itself. With a nice sharp scalpel I'm just going to clean up those torn edges so we've got freshly cut cambium. So this is the bud, the first bud that protrudes from the other end. I will shave and expose some of the cambium so that it can align and graft successfully. With the graft in place, now I can remove this tape. It's actually harder to remove than it is to put it on. And we have damaged a bud there. Removing the tape, but uh, it could be all right. At least one of them's okay. The main one is the tip, really. But there's at least one viable bud there. This node has the, the potential to produce buds and there's even one right by the uh, right by the hole. To ensure success of the graft, I need this to thicken as much as possible. So I want really vigorous growth. Always asking what are the goals for this tree? Do I want to slow it down and start uh, making the scale look more bonsai-like? Or do I want to speed it up and get healing, thickening, grafts to take? I want the latter, so we're going into trunk development mode. So we'll get it out of this pot and into something that's got more room for its roots and a bit more depth. It's going to get it really grown with extreme vigour. Do need to be careful not to knock the grafts too much. Don't want to break any branches or spoil the work that I've done by jolting it. The reason I did it before repotting though is because I've got a much more stable 
space with it in, established in this container. If I'd have done the report, it might have been loosey goosey, making the graft just a bit more awkward to apply. Just being careful on my graft, I'm going to take the pot off of the tree. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to loosen the roots on this side. circling roots off we don't need these like contrary to what you might think I do own a root, root rake I mean it's definitely faster time to place yes this is the time this is the place now I'll come in with the chopstick to work in around the rabari If I'm pursuing a sumo style with this tree, with drastic taper, I really need the nabari to look good. So before I go out and hose the tree, I'm going to take care of any really obnoxious structural roots that are contributing to flaws in the nabari. So a prime example is this root. I don't even know where it starts, but it's, it's cutting underneath this structural root and going sideways instead of out from the trunk. This root here also comes down from the trunk really nicely, but then hooks off at a right angle. So that's gonna be our first choice for removal. We've got this piece here coming straight down and then across. There we go. And this root here is coming off to the side. It should really come in that way, but there's nothing for me to cut back to just yet. So I'm going to take it back to these side roots here. By holding it back, it's more inclined to produce roots further back on itself. In a moment, I'll talk about why I've gone with this approach rather than creating a raft or going with a windswept design. Now, believe it or not, I'm still not done with this nabari. So this root is getting exceptionally strong and I'm leaving quite a lot of roots behind on it. Now we do have roots further back that I can cut back to. This is a drastic root prune. If I really hold this back, I've got much more chance of getting roots develop in other places that are more useful for the nabari development moving forward. 
if I do this one cut at a time, it'll just make it a little bit easier to get my jaws in place. Like that. Now, ideally I'd remove this, but because we've got nothing in this area, I'd rather leave it. I just wonder if I can just tease it into a better position. I wonder if I can pop a bamboo stake in here just to prop it, because I don't want it to fuse into this section. See if I can get the stake in there a bit more snug, maybe. I think that's better. And also this root here, this thicker root underneath, I also don't like this one, but I can't really do much more than what I've done already now. I think we're at the, we're starting to hit upon the limits of what I can do. It does have a root coming off to the side here. Just wondering if I can tease this root further out now. It's quite flexible. I don't want to rip it. Yeah, that's better. There are some feeder roots further down here, but not loads. And we do have some secondaries to cut back to. There's more feeder roots attached to the end of this root. We do have some really nice healthy roots that we can cut back to on this piece as well. Making sure I'm not cutting off any nice feeder roots. We don't need that one. It's coming from all the way down here, this piece. Okay, there we go. And then on this side, Start off a little bit more conservatively. That's good enough for that bundle and I'll just come from the bottom just to cut this knuckle off. The reason I'm not going for a raft is because having, laying, having laid it down, I'm going to have this big foot up in the air, that's going to look a bit weird. What we would be giving up is this really interesting flared base. Um, if we keep it as an upright tree, this is a really sought after feature. Um, yes, okay, the Nabari isn't perfect. It's got quite a lot of flaws. Uh, it's got a big gap around the back. We've got a big scar down here and it's not exactly stunning in this area. It needs work. It's not perfect, but this is just, I think this is a really good foundation to build an interesting tapered upright tree. And then a lot of people have asked, why not go for the windswept? I don't know, maybe I'm reading it wrong, but to me, the stable base doesn't say I've existed in a really wind-torn environment. The stable base says to me, I'm a powerful tree growing in open space. I've spread my branches, I've spread my roots. Life is good. That's what, that's what this drastically stable base says to me. So it, I think that as a windswept, it would end up looking quite contrived. Like the trunk and the branches w wouldn't be telling the same story. Now having said all that, grafting in down here and looking to improve the base as a shorter tapered tree doesn't rule out any of those options for the future. It could be that I air layer the top off. On the other hand, if I lay it down as a raft, it's much harder to go back on that decision. A tip with your training pots that have got feet like this, check that there's a hole for water to escape because otherwise it just sits there in a puddle leading to root death. I don't have to go too mad with the chopsticking because there's hardly any roots to chopstick around. With so few roots, it doesn't take a lot to get the soil worked in. So I'll get this tree outside, water it in, and then we're done for this working. Hmm, that's not good. 